In this lesson, we're going to talk about surface area, volume, and capacity. Surface area is sort of a hybrid between two dimensions and three dimensions, in that it is an area of all the outside of a three-dimensional object. If the object you're looking at is made of polygons, it's pretty easy just to take the area of each of the individual faces and then add it all together. But surface area can also be applied to other objects, such as cones, cylinders, spheres, etc. You just need a special formula for those, but for our purposes we will focus only on rectangular solids. Let's start with a basic example. Suppose you want to paint this block, shown below. It's 4 inches by 4 inches by 4 inches, and we want to figure out how much paint we need in order to cover the block. Within reason, paint is pretty thin, so it's the same as surface area. We'll simply find the surface area of this cube, and then that will be the answer of how much paint we need. Let's break down this cube. Cubes have identical shaped faces, and there are six of them. Notice that these faces are four inches by four inches. So then the area of each face will be four times four, which is 16 inches squared. Then the total surface area would simply be 6 times that 16 and give us 96 inches squared. We merely needed to multiply it by 6 because there are 6 identical faces. Let's do one more example of this where we have an open top box. An open top box has 5 faces that we're concerned about. We're really only looking at the outside of the box, but notice that we have three different dimensions given to us this time. Let's break it down into pieces. There's the front and the back of the box that are the same size. Namely, they are 50 centimeters wide and 30 centimeters tall. That represents this part of the figure and this sort of hidden part of the figure in the back. So what this will contribute is two faces that are 50 centimeters by 30 centimeters, and we get 3,000 centimeters squared. Now let's do the next shapes. The left and the right side are 80 centimeters long and 30 centimeters tall. So since there are two of those again, we'll do 2 times 80 times 30 and we get 4,800 centimeters squared. There's one more shape that's sort of hidden, and by my drawing these lines, hopefully you can now see it, we're looking at the bottom of the box, which would be 50 centimeters by 80 centimeters. For this one, if there was a top on the box, I would still multiply by two, but notice that there is a bottom on the box only. It's an open top box this time. So now all I'll need to do is find the area of one of them, which gives me 4,000 centimeters squared. Now to find the total surface area, all I need to do is add these three numbers together. 3,000 plus 4,800 plus 4,000 gives me 11,800 centimeters squared for the total surface area of this box. Next, let's talk about volume. Volume is a true three-dimensional measurement. This time it's measuring the amount of space inside of the three-dimensional object. Some units that you'll frequently run across for volume is, say, cubic feet. Cubic feet could be used to measure, say, how much air is in a building, or how much air a air conditioning system will push through per minute. In the metric countries, we might use a cubic meter, which is now getting much, much smaller. It's closer to 30 times larger than a cubic foot. And for very small measurements, you might use cubic inches or cubic centimeters. So now I ask the same question that I asked in the last lesson. It seems like these are all cubic units, but are they all cubic units? You can probably come up with a volume unit that's not cubed if you think about it for a moment. I'll give you a hint and then we'll mention it later. My hint is water. For a rectangular solid, 
The volume is simply the length times the width times the height. Notice that you can use this for an open box or a closed box. Either way, the amount of space is not changed by putting a lid on it. Let's do an example. Find the volume of a rectangular solid with length 5 centimeters, width 4 centimeters, and height 11 centimeters. For this figure, again the volume is simply length times width times height. So we have 5 centimeters times 4 centimeters times 11 centimeters, and I get 220. This comes out to centimeters cubed when we're talking about volume. Find the volume of the following open top box. Remember that open top and closed top boxes make no difference when it comes to volume. It's still just length times width times height. So I get 7 times 11 times 3, and I get 231 inches cubed. Here's an interesting example. Concrete is sold by the yard, so they call it. But a yard is actually a cubic yard. So if you want to pour a rectangular driveway, and the dimensions of the driveway are 24 feet by 65 feet, and you're wanting to put a depth of 5 inches on the concrete, we want to figure out how many yards of concrete we should buy. Now here's a little warning for you. What we're looking at is a very large rectangle. Here's a picture of what it looks like, but you'll notice I haven't written the height in. The height is 5 inches. Now that's a small problem. 5 inches does not match up with the feet measurements that we were given. And honestly, it's not in yards either. So I'm going to write this as 5 inches. But what we really should do is convert all of these numbers to yards before we do any calculations. As I mentioned at the beginning, there are 3 feet in a yard. So all you need to do is divide by 3. Yes, it introduces fractions, but there's not much we can do about that. 24 divided by 3 is an even number. We get 8 yards. Now, the last number is in inches. There's 12 inches in a foot and there's three feet in a yard. So if you think about it, that means there are 36 inches just by multiplying the two in a yard. So rather than divide by three, I'm gonna divide this by 36. And now all of our measurements are in the same units and it's in yards, which is what we're trying to get in the first place. So now if we want to simply figure out how much concrete to buy, we will find the volume of this extremely thin rectangular solid Again, it's length times width times height. The length is 65 over 3. Just work with the fraction as needed. Width is 8. Height is 5 over 36. When you punch this in your calculator, you can do 65 divided by 3 times 8 times 5 divided by 36. Just kind of the numerators you'll multiply, the denominators you'll divide. And I get approximately 24.07. And I'm going to put it like this, yards. Remember, this is actually a cubic yard, is what we've really got. So now I get to the last part where it says, keep in mind that you cannot buy a fraction of a yard. With that said, you'll need to buy 25 yards of concrete. Now let's talk about capacity. As I mentioned earlier, water was your hint of units that you might be thinking of that use other things besides cubic units for volume. And here's some obvious ones. A gallon, a liter, a quart, a cup. All of these things are units that measure volumes of water or volumes of other liquids, but usually the easiest one to think about is water. So what you want is a few conversions to figure out things in volume units rather than in cubic units. But first, let's talk about some simple ones that are used in the U.S. system and the metric system. In the U.S., milk is often sold by the gallon, or perhaps the half gallon. And if you read on the milk bottle, you'll actually see the conversion of 3.78 liters. One way you might find milk in the metric system is just one liter of milk. Somewhat comparable to our half gallon, but it's still our half gallon is much larger. One liter of milk would be 1.06 quarts of milk, because a liter is just a little bit larger than a quart. 
A soda can. You might have one of these nearby and you can look at it. A soda can is 12 ounces, and they also generally show the conversion to 355 milliliters. The most common time you've probably run across liters in your life is the 2 liter bottle of soda. The 2 liter bottle is 67.6 ounces. That just sounds strange to look at it that way. We're used to 2 liters. So this is one metric unit that has integrated itself into our lives more so than other ones. And then one interesting example is that the large bottles of Gatorade are actually one quart. Very American made there. And so it's actually equal to 0.95 liters because again, a quart is a little bit smaller than a liter. So now let's talk about the conversions. One milliliter is defined to be one cubic centimeter. That makes it pretty easy. And with that said, it's fairly simple math to say one liter would then be a thousand centimeters cubed. This particular conversion is a good one to have nearby. Also, one gallon is actually defined to be 231 inches cubed. Let's use these conversions and see what we can do with them. How much water would each of these containers hold? And we're going to give an answer that matches up with the unit system that we're given. So our first example has 90 centimeters by 80 centimeters by 40 centimeters. With those being metric units, let's give our answer in liters. To do this, the first thing we need to do is find the volume, which is the length times the width times the height. We have 90 centimeters by 80 centimeters by 40 centimeters. And if we multiply those two together, we get 288,000 centimeters cubed. Now what we want is to convert that to liters. As we saw on the previous slide, there are 1,000 centimeters cubed in a liter. So we need to simply divide our answer by 1,000 and we get 288 liters for this. If you think about how big this is, it's actually a pretty large object. Next example. Again, the volume would be length times width times height. We'll say the length is 22, the width is 7, and the height is 6 to get 924 inches cubed. Now on the previous slide, we saw that there were 231 inches cubed in a gallon. Let's do the division. If we do this, we actually get exactly 4 gallons.